I want you guys to think about your heroes. Who are your heroes? Because I've been thinking a lot about um, through the, we've had this amazing privilege to go around the country holding these meetings. And I've met some pretty heroic people, and I think we have as well on the stage today. Um, I think of my heroes, people like Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, my grandmother, Lydia Levine, uh, who was a refugee and a Holocaust survivor. Um, and the one thing I've realized that they had in common is that they all balanced outrage and optimism. And I've been thinking a lot about that recently. There's a lot of reasons to be outraged right now in America. I haven't checked the news for about four hours. I suspect I'll find another one. Um, and more than any one thing that's happening or any one policy that's being made, um, I'm outraged that as a country we are forgetting that there's a, not that this was ever complete, but there's a sense in a lot of our politics right now, and I'm not partisan, just small p politics, um, a sense that we don't have an obligation to take care of everyone. Um, and we hear on the panel the consequences of losing that sense of purpose and community is a city as wealthy as Boston, uh, having people who are hungry, having people who are homeless. And so I think it's very easy to be outraged. The problem with outrage is it's paralyzing. I know a lot of you are in nonprofit organizations. How do you go to work every day uh, when all you see is the outrage and you're distracted by it? Uh, and so the incredible privilege for us to do these events and to work on this book and with people uh, who've written chapters or been in part of these presentations um, is to get optimistic. And I have to tell you today, um, added a little bit to my outrage, um, I think it's outrageous that community servings has a waiting list uh, when it's proven that what they do not only makes a difference in people's lives but saves money. Uh, it's outrageous that for want of $2 million, Homestart can't meet the needs of preventing evictions in the Boston housing system. Um, so a little bit I've added to my outrage today, but mostly I've been able to get re-imbued with my optimism. And it's something that we've had the privilege at Nonprofit Finance Fund to get from our clients as we go around the country. I hope you had a sense today of and I think you said this on the panel, there's this incredible moment happening, and sometimes it's hard to see through it, to see through what the immediate outrage is in front of us, to realize that there's a system changing. People are changing the way we work. These, you guys talked about an MOU, something so specific, but it really signals part of a broader shift in our system. Um, and so I'm optimistic about what we see when we hear about leaders that we've heard today. Um, and I'll end with talking a little bit about not just the individual organizations, but the idea that the systems can change. I think part of what an event like this can do is uh, it can leave you daunted to think, well, how can every, if everything has to change and it's so complex. Um, maybe it's not going to really be possible to see through the way we currently work into the way of the future. Uh, David didn't talk about the history of the food as medicine movement. Community servings here in Boston is one. Uh, they're incredible organizations around the country, all of whom were born um, out of the AIDS crisis of the 1980s. And I get my optimism from you guys because I can't look at him, but I do this. But at the darkest moment in a community, the worst plague that had landed on a community in this in a hundred years, were people who refused to give in to the outrage that their brothers were being abandoned to die alone. And simply out of that refusal came 40 years later this amazing resource for our communities, not just for the community of people living with HIV AIDS but so many other people. And I am most optimistic when I think about the fact that right now around this country is a new movement forming, and we don't know the form it's going to take, but we know that because people are going to refuse to give in to the outrage and are going to see through the current system and all of its failures to build something new and something beautiful. And I'm incredibly optimistic when I think about what we will be talking about 30 years from now that came out of what we were in today, a system that is not working, but as you've seen today, has the kernels of a new way of working in it. So I just wanted to thank the panelists and all of you. And finally to say that if this was just about scaling one or two programs, it wouldn't necessarily be a place for everyone in it. This is about completely changing the system of how we work. The thing about system change, on one hand, it's daunting. And on the other hand, it means everyone has a role to play. It's how you vote, how you buy, how you donate, how you go to work every day. And so we all can be a part of something that we're all going to be very proud of in 30 years about how we, at this moment of crisis, that we're able to create something that we'll be able to cherish in the future. So I want to thank you all uh, and hope you can join us for drinks uh, to continue this movement together. Thank you. Thank you.